Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the art panel of the 2021 SGDA Summit. Today, we are joined by our lovely guests, Nina Matafari, Ashley Lyons, Matt Hansen, Hansen, and Sadie Boyd. <laughs> well, you know, let's get right into it. Nina, where do you work and what's your discipline? I work at Maxis uh, EA. I'm a concept artist on the team, uh, work on The Sims 4. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ashley? I am the lead VFX artist at Gearbox Software. Matt? Uh, I'm an art director at Obsidian Entertainment. And Sadie? I am a 2D environment artist at Arcane Studios Austin. Awesome. So we have some wonderful guests here today. So for the first question, uh, you know, what made you want to go into this industry? What inspired you to start pining towards it? Well, go for it. <laughs> I can answer first. Um, I remember seeing like art books of like Mass Effect and, and stuff like that. And like one of the earliest games that I started playing was like this rinky dink game called like Ghost Master for the PC. And the studio doesn't exist anymore. But I remember like playing the game being like the idea was in my head like, who makes this? I want to know. Mm -hmm. uh, I told my parents to like, that doesn't exist. <laughs> There's no such thing as a game job focus on focus on something else so I think like one of those games I was like I want to create the art for it mm -hmm. uh, for me it was kind of a, an accident to be honest um, when I was uh, a, a younger person we'll just say a younger person <laughs> I, I enjoyed uh, role-playing games and, and just games broadly um, especially tabletop games and I was doing a lot of that work uh, out of school and uh, one thing led to another, and I kind of stumbled into a, a concept art position at Obsidian, and I've been doing that since. Hmm. I would say my mine was kind of an accident as well, where uh, I decided to go to grad school, and instead of the grad school I went to had two options, or for visual effects and graphic design, and I accidentally crossed off uh, VFX, and then when I got to school, I was like, yeah, sure, sounds good one thing leads to another I end up really enjoying VFX and then I end up graduating and then a couple years later I find a, a job in the gaming industry as a VFX artist um I think for, for mine it was interesting um I played a lot of video games when I was younger with my father and we played Tomb Raider together <laughs> and I kind of grew up um I was I actually went to school for archaeology and anthropology first because of Tomb Raider because I thought <laughs> that's what I wanted to do. Um, and long story, you know, short and, you know, they didn't give me the, you know, the booty shorts or the dual pistols. Um, I decided to kind of reevaluate and I was like, well, you know, I actually liked the environment of the space and I liked the feeling of like going through and, and playing it and like this strong emotion that invo like invoked from that. Um, made me want to pursue uh, game art. So bit of a twisty path, path there. <laughs> mm -hmm. So as you start going into this industry, what would, how did you decide or how did you hone your style or your niche in the industry, even if you went in as like accidentally? Uh, I'll, I'll pop in this one. Um, so for me, it was, it was actually the opposite experience. I had to break my style. Um, I was, you know, working as a, a concept and, and uh, UI artist at the time. <clears throat> Pardon me. And uh, you have to you have to kind of chameleon and match the style of the studio you're working for and the title that you're working on. Uh, especially if you're in a small to mid-sized studio where your titles might be, you know, have shorter development cycles and you have to swap frequently. Um, you almost have to go in the other direction. You have to say like, okay. I'll save my style for my personal work, and then I will adopt your style, whatever that is, um, moving forward. And now in art direction, it's kind of like it's flipped again, and it's <laughs> it's a matter of like, okay, well, I am now defining the style for not just myself, but you know, n number of artists, uh, and it's it's an interesting process of figuring out. Uh, and I think it, it's similar to finding a personal style of figuring out like what are the strengths of the team versus what are the strengths of myself as an individual and also what are the things that people actually like to make um it's 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 very important to figure out where you feel the strongest working not necessarily what you're best at doing 
but where you feel the strongest when, when you're the most contented, when you're the happiest creating things and pursuing those things. Um, and when you're developing a style for a team, you kind of do the same thing, but for the group and you kind of analyze what are the things that the people on my team are excited about making and how they're excited about working and how can we push things in that direction and tailor things in that direction. But yeah. Mm -hmm. I would say for, for myself, uh, one of the ways that I definitely hone my style is just creating as much as I can and uh, not necessarily during like the regular quote nine to five uh, job. Uh, but after hours and you know, have some downtime, just trying out new things, seeing what you can do. Uh, learning new software is key. Uh, it's especially because when you start learning something new, you're in the, you're, you're trying to figure things out. And because it's, because you're not used to working on this software or like this new technique, you might figure, uh, figure something out or find something new that you've never even thought about before. And then that will bleed into your older techniques of saying, okay, I used to do it this way, but now that I learned this new thing, I can take my old technique, my old style and adapt it to this new thing that I'm learning. Uh, so that's definitely one way. And also watching a lot of uh, animation uh, really helps, especially for for uh, my discipline, you know, visual effects, because a lot of stuff in animation can tie over to, you know, uh, what, what, what we do as far as like timing and doing those, uh, like the basic 12 principles of animation, you know, it's uh, in seeing a lot of that in, you know, in movies and TV and from, from, from professionals, and then just, uh, you know, transferring that into what we do at, uh, you know, at our studios. Mm -hmm. uh, back to Matt, uh, would you say that you chameleon more than you do come up with your own original stuff now, or is it more original and that you're okay with the, excuse me, let me rephrase this. Would you say that you are more chameleon or more original work now? Is that much more different as being an art director in for a studio rather than being as a simple artist for a studio? Well, well, simple artist is a is is, is a dangerous. Or like, phrase. excuse me. Uh, no, no, no. You're, no, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. Uh, I, I'm I'm teasing. Uh, I would be dead without my team. Um, <laughs> but uh, I I would say that it's it's a different process. Um, I'm still, you know, the the work that I'm doing and the style of the game that we're working on uh, is not indicative at all of the way that I personally would work. Um, don't get me wrong, I would love to have a game of, of very dumb little monsters running all over the place because that is absolutely the kinds of things I would love to do. Um, but because I've been put in charge of a specific IP that has a la visual language and it has uh, a, a history behind it, um, I'm still very much chameleoning. Uh, that said, that IP still contains a lot of the elements that I really, really appreciate and you know influences that, that mean a lot to me as well. Um, but it's still full chameleon mode, really. Uh, even even mm -hmm. if I occasionally get to trickle in, like, ah, yes, here's a here's a dumb little thing that I love uh, as well. Uh, for the most part, I'm I'm serving the IP, my team, the studio, that sort of thing, as opposed to my own personal uh, visual interests. Yeah. Did that answer mm -hmm. your question? All right. I'm sorry. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Good deal. That was great. Uh, what's unique about the gaming industry that you'd say is different from other industries for artists? I would say it's smaller. Yes. <laughs> everyone knows <laughs> everyone. Um, mm -hmm. It's more interactive. Um, I would say you get feedback a lot easier from your players or like you're you're just like one step away from your players and in some cases you are the player and you could hear feedback in the game when you're online or whatever, you could hear people be like, this game is, you know, poop and chill, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> um, it's definitely like a lot tighter and like, you, like literally like I could know uh, Sadie and I could be like, oh, do you know Hazel? And yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and then it's, like, <laughs> it's like, and then Sadie's like, yeah, of course. And then they know someone else. So mm -hmm. it's very close. It's like a, a weird family. <laughs> And because of that, if you are um, 
rude in the game yeah. industry. <laughs> it that spreads very quickly. Yeah. Um, and yeah. So because of the cl how close knit and how small it, it it is, because I don't think people realize how small it small it is. Um, but yeah, if you are someone maybe we don't want to work with, or you have a bad attitude, or something like that, that also um, spreads a lot faster. I think maybe the most other industry <laughs> yeah like guaranteed um, if if someone's interviewing you know sadie and i could be like did you hear about this guy <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um i think that i wouldn't say it's unique but it definitely happens a lot more and it's it's uh interesting <laughs> <laughs> yeah i have a funny story about that where i was at a studio in california <laughs> and the someone who had worked on the east coast was uh, at the i ended up at my studio and i was like oh do you know so and so from the east coast totally different studio and, and she was like yeah that guy's a pain and i was like yeah he is a pain <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it's it's also crazy too i don't want to say the the amount of of people going from studio to studio but um i wouldn't i wouldn't say like the turnover <laughs> rate i um but we do have a lot more people who who leave, go to other studios, and it feeds into um, like the whole networking and knowing other people. I mean, like I, uh, one of my close friends is moving to Finland to go to a studio over there. Um, so it's it's really interesting, and that's why like I I have a love hate relationship with E3, but I love it because I get to see all those people who come in, and it's like weirdly like maybe a family reunion or a high school <laughs> reunion or, or something similar but um especially to like networking and and creating like friendships and everything um they're a lot stronger i have found too so yeah it's, it's so funny that it, oh sorry oh, go ahead no 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 we can we can move on it's fine <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. this is like a follow-up question go ahead uh well i was just gonna say it, it, it's funny that you know sadie brings up that kind of um lack of stability i guess of of you know when one project ends a lot of people will leave because they're not interested in whatever the next project is lined up or unfortunately you know you hear horror stories of of studios that have to let people go after a project and that's that's never pleasant um, but on the on the flip side of that, uh, this industry is the first time I've ever had health insurance. So it's like, all right, like, well, since I was a child, and it's <laughs> there's a stability that actually comes with it. And certain studios, you know, they'll hold on to their people for title after title after title. Um, Obsidian's kind of like that. Even if someone isn't like the right fit for the next title, we'll be like, yeah, but we don't want to let them go. So all right, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. And so, you know, we've got people at our studio that have been there since since it opened. I'm I'm kind of like a young gun there, and I've been there like six years. So it's you know it, it's it's an interesting dichotomy of uh, you can find stability if you want it, and you can also just kind of go with the flow and you know mm -hmm. move from studio to studio, and that's totally accepted as well. Uh, it's just a matter of how what what you're looking for out of life if you're a more frenetic individual or if you are seeking that stability that's true you could be more like a nomad or you could be more like a you know like someone who just stays in one place and maxis we have people that have been there since the sims 2 like i'm i've been there for three years and that's like considered like the low end but at some <laughs> indie game dev studios studios that's like three you're like the most ancient <laughs> wise person there <laughs> Yeah, I've been I've been at Arcane for six years, and there are some folks there who have been there like for twenty. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, so it's it's definitely, and also I think um, on resumes too, it's not as frowned upon if you're bouncing from studio to studio. That's, and, that's common. <laughs> but yeah, it's very common as opposed to maybe other industries. Mm -hmm. See, I see. Nice, nice. What's the? So we have a good mix of. 2D and 3D mediums here. What's the what would be your creative process when working on games? Do whatever my art director tells me to. <laughs> I was say, do whatever my art director tells me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's not like there's like a process per se, but like it is it is a bit like when you get into the industry, it's like your creative processes start at nine. <laughs> 
do whatever oh. your objective tells you to. <laughs> Matt knows. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're the one doling out the stuff. And then um, you work on it until the day ends. And then repeat ad infinitum until, you know, game ship. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, I, I would say it's, it's it's a little bit like, it's. I mean, I've been in other studios, but at, at Gearbox, it's a little bit different where as our, our, our art process at least for 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 my team, it's very goes with the flow um, as far as what what we would create. Where our, our art director would give us uh, direction and say, "Hey, this should look like this," and or "This thing should look like this," or we'll have concept art where the it would be like. Uh, this should look like this, or here's an idea. But I know for our team, we get a lot of uh, creative freedom and and what we create, which is one of the things uh, that I really love about about working at Gearbox is if it looks cool and if it works and if it's awesome, then you know nine times out of ten, we'll get to keep it. It goes in the game, and and then maybe we'll we'll, we'll iterate on that. Whereas you know if we get a concept piece it's not uh set in stone so to speak where we'll we will have a lot of freedom to kind of change things up and if it um if, if we think that it would something would look cooler a certain way then uh we can we have total freedom to just kind of go with what we think would look awesome yeah um we we kind of follow similar we have like the hybrid of like do what the art director tells us to do and also if it if it looks cool performs cool um it's stylistic and matches everything we have that freedom and especially with my position is quite strange because we don't have anybody else and uh nobody in the company has that title so it's a very hybrid role of i do 3d and 2d and i do concept and and all this stuff so my own personal tasks within the role do deviate sometimes from the normal thing but I, I also do get to have like a lot of creative freedom sometimes um, I specialize we talked about niche before I specialize with signage and environmental graphic design and wayfinding um, so I kind of nobody else in the studio really understands that so they're like just just go ahead and do that and then their director's like that's great that fits that fits good job <laughs> and I'm like awesome <laughs> Yeah, that, that mm-hmm. fits is like the most important two, <laughs> two words. Uh, so my, my personal creative process is actually just a lot of Excel spreadsheets these days and so not terribly creative at all. But uh, <laughs> as far as how we, you know, how I try to run the team itself, um, I try to be a little bit more creative freeform where, you know, I, a, any individual task that goes out to artists, it, it comes with a few things. It comes with what are the core design pillars that we're trying to establish with this thing, whatever that may be? Um, what is it serving the player? Like, is it is it a piece of you know exposition visually? Is it uh, some wayfinding information? You know, whatever it doesn't matter. Um, and then go. Like, here's 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 a really rough box to play in. Go play. And then all I have to do at that point, assuming I trust my team, which I do, which is great. It's a good, very fortunate position to be in. Uh, assuming I can trust my team, all I need to do is just gently guide, you know, back and forth to say like, hey, we're steering away from this core design pillar for our title. Let's let's move back in that direction. Now oh, we're getting stylized in this way a little bit too much. Let's let's ease it back towards that central thing. But it's less of a dictatorial like you're going to you're going to make a dragon. It is going to have yellow scales. It is going to have a saddle and a laser gun and go for it. And it's not wearing the saddle. The saddle's for a bigger dragon that it's going to ride. Like there's not, <laughs> it's never quite that thorough. It's, it's, it's gentle, definitely... gentle corralling. Yes, exactly. So. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, in the industry, what do you think are absolutely irreplaceable tools that you use? It, just every day. Microsoft Excel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in all seriousness, for concept artists, it kind of varies. Uh, I mean, Photoshop is your, your basic standard. Um, as much as sometimes it could be just the most frustrating program in the world, you know? Yeah. And it crashes on you <laughs> and it slaps you and it's like, you know, you suck and you're like, I'm sorry, Adobe overlords, I have to serve you, I have to keep using you. Um, I'd say that's like a necessity for concept artists 
for now. Of course, tools always change. And in the next, I don't know, 10 years, we could be using cyber concept interface or something like that. I don't know. That'd be um, awesome. <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome if it just like transmitted your brain waves into art. Um, <laughs> Um, but knowing like Excel and, and Zoom nowadays is also really useful, right? <laughs> I would echo definitely Photoshop. Um, I use a reference gathering tool called PureRef, um, which is, oh my gosh, if I see something that I'm like, oh, this is cool and I want to emulate this, I can just drag it and drop it onto a reference board. Um, and then, you know, your basic studio tools, whatever those might be, um, but, or Slack, or <laughs> like the thing, Jira, Jira. <laughs> Confluence, if you, if you yeah. have that. Yeah, um, Confluence. Yeah, like documentation tools, all that. I think I use those a little more <laughs> or on par <laughs> with everything else. Mm -hmm. I think one of the tools that I use almost daily is Houdini, um, just because it's, it's a good tool for, for what I need, <laughs> right? I mean, it's almost replaced pretty much everything uh, that I used to use. So I can just one-stop shop type of uh, type of program. It's extremely cool. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm going to break with convention a little bit um, because software is great. Don't get me wrong. Like Houdini kicks ass. Photoshop, I don't know how I would do my job without it. <laughs> um, but at the expense of potentially sounding a little wishy-washy, uh, I think the most important tool is empathy. Um, it, empathy for your coworkers to understand like what it is they need, how you can serve them, um, how you can make their lives easier, especially if you are like a one-stop shop, all service person, like concept art that's interfacing with a bunch of different you know, groups or, I mean, honestly, they're all one-stop shops. Who am I kidding? Like, VFX has to appease character art and environment art and everyone else and, and you know, systems designers and everything else. Um, so empathy for your coworkers is huge. Uh, empathy for your players, understanding what sorts of things your players want to see, what they want to experience. Uh, empathy for, I hate to say it, but empathy for the company you work for. Um, understanding what their goals are, what are the directions that they're moving in. Uh, and so I, I'd say like, outside of fundamental art skills of understanding balance and composition and value and all of that, which I would say is probably the most important tool set. Um, just that ability to turn off your inward reflection, look outward and say like, what is, what is my impact on the people around me, the world that I'm a part of, and how can I make that a better place for the people that want to participate in that? Um, if, if you show that that's a, a highly important thing to you and I am interviewing you, yeah, you just made it to the next round. Like, <laughs> great. Like, I don't care what the job is. Yep, you, you pushed all my buttons in the right way. Thanks. Um, so yeah, I, I, because at the end of the day, like we're all a part of a big team and we, mm -hmm. you know, even, even small teams are big teams within this industry. Um, and we are all serving a positively massive audience. And so anything we can do to, to put ourselves in other people's shoes in that process is, is gonna be huge. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, now making a complete 180 from that. Uh, what kind of, what do you look for in this? What kind of things would you suggest that a student put in their portfolio to make it stand out from others? What kind of skills are essential to show on a portfolio? I know I just, oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no worries. Um, I think um, as far as portfolios go, I think understanding um, the studio that you're applying to is one of the probably biggest things you can do for your portfolio. So um, say like, for example, Arcane, they have a very like stylistic, um, kind of chunky, over-exaggerated kind of shapes and, and lines and, and colors, um, gradient use and all that. It's so if a student wanted to apply for, you know, concept art or a 3D position, um, I would suggest like taking a look at that studio's existing art style, making sure that their own art style um, not necessarily fits because they can have any art style they want, but the things that they're putting into their portfolio would mimic 
that style too. Um, I'm not saying we wouldn't, we wouldn't be, you know, look at a portfolio that, you know, had heavily realistic stuff or bright colors, but I think it's, it definitely shows a level of detail and a level of uh, consideration for the studio you're applying to. And it makes us less likely to have to ask a bunch of questions or, you know, do the dreaded art test of like, can you fit or mimic this style? Um, so I definitely think having things in your portfolio that are slightly tailored to the studio you're applying to is worthwhile. Uh, agreed. Mm -hmm. And I think it's also important to uh, to realize that um, the fancy concept art that you see in the books, that's usually done after the game has come out. That is not what we're doing. Like as a concept artist every day, I would love to say I'm the one like rendering the beautiful splash art illustrations <laughs> and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, I'm just, I'm creating like turnarounds, reference sheets. Like a lot of my work is like not pretty stuff. And like a lot of it is like, let's say Matt's like, I need an idea of a gun. And it's like, I take a gun, I put it through a filter, I slap like mushrooms on it. I, you know, do like a turnaround. I'm like, art director, here's what I have. And, you know, Matt's like, you have two hours to do this. Sometimes you have to take shortcuts, right? And like, it's important in a portfolio to show that you have, you know, adaptation. You could adapt to a style. Um, you could try out different ones. You can, you, you show your iteration um turnarounds um at the end of the day as a concept artist for the most part unless it's a 2d game uh you're sending this to a 3d artist and uh you need to show that um you can make sense with your stuff and you can do call outs you could do uh what is the texture of this fabric and stuff like that and um i think like sometimes concept art is glamorized as like doing these beautiful sweeping environmental pictures and it's like no <laughs> unfortunately at the end of the day you have a schedule that you have to do and if you have to take shortcuts to go do that schedule you got to take shortcuts right so yeah that's my that's my concept art realistic <laughs> thing mm -hmm. let's say i have uh two of them because uh something i i that I also teach, so uh, I tell my students this because I'll get, you know, questions about demo reels and how do I set this up? So I actually, I do like a 20 minute just presentation of how to do a demo reel, how to interview for, for many of my students. And one of the things that I tell them is to focus your demo reel on what you're applying to, you know, not just um, as Sadie was saying, applying to the studio, like know what, know what type of art style they have, but also know what you're applying for is because many times where I've seen a demo reel or someone applying for a visual effects position and there's nothing but modeling in their demo, like half their demo reel is modeling and the other half has some effects where I don't want to see your models. I'm not interested in your modeling skill. I'm not interested in how well you can draw. I want to see how well you can do VFX. So make sure your demo reel has just that in it. And on top of that, not something that doesn't even have to do with the demo reel, but make sure that your presentation for whatever website you use, your presentation is professional, solid, and very clean. If I, you know, I, I'm not, I don't, I tell my students, you don't need to have a personal website. You know, you can use ArtStation, uh, YouTube is fine, things like that. But if I go to your website or whatever link you gave me, if I have to, search through five minutes of just stuff, I'm not going to look at your demo reel because I have other things I, I, that I could be doing, you know? So when I go to your website, I want to see, here's my demo reel, or maybe click a link, demo reel. Cool. I can watch it. I can get there in five seconds. And I, I think that's also very important because it tells me that the person applying is serious about what they're doing. Like they put time into the presentation they 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 sat down and had a and you know put something together that says i am serious about getting a job i am serious about applying for your studio i didn't just put this together in three seconds and just sent it out to everybody mm -hmm. <laughs> uh matt you're, you're muted <laughs> audio oh i'm <laughs> sorry I, I, all, literally all i said was what they said uh yeah. it's, it's, all, it's all true um there's a couple of things Ashley said that I do want to touch on. One of them, uh, 
having your stuff easy to access on your portfolio, however you present it, isn't just like great for me because I don't want to slog through stuff. If, if it isn't easy to access, there's a chance I won't even see it in the first place um, because we have hiring managers and they are very, very, very busy people. And if they have to dig and dig and dig to find your work, they're just going to throw it off the pile. It's gone. And, and it'll ne no matter how good your work is, if it isn't easy to see, I, I won't see it ever um, because I'm not directly combing through portfolios usually. I usually am handed like, ah, yes, here's some good ones. Uh, and then I'll take the time. Um, and, and the other thing uh, he mentioned there was focusing your portfolio towards whatever your craft is. That's really, really important if you're, if you're looking for uh, a job at a larger studio. Conversely, showing yourself as a, a, a person that can wear many hats is huge at smaller studios or on smaller projects at larger studios. Um, you know, Obsidian does a mix of big and large projects and uh, big and large, uh, big and small <laughs> projects, large boulder, the size of a small boulder, uh, <laughs> uh, big and small projects. And for those smaller projects, we need people that can do multiple things. Um, mm -hmm. You know, whether that be, ah, yes, I'm a 2D specialist. So that means I'm doing concept art and, you know, marketing and, UI or yes, I'm, you know, quite comfortable working in Houdini. So I will do VFX and also landscape design and whatever else. Right. Um, so it depends on what you're pushing for. And I think that goes back to, you know, what Sadie was saying originally of like, know the studio you're applying for mm -hmm. and know what their needs are uh, and, and accomplish that um, and, and show that front and center. Uh, and then also to touch on what Nina was saying, like, if you, are additionally showing like within your portfolio that you can show your work, so to speak. Uh, don't just show me this beautiful polished thing. Show me how you got there because nine times out of 10, when we, when we need a concept or whatever, we need to see that like iteration because we'll probably stop you at like phase three and be like, all right, cool. We got enough. You're good. Yep. You don't have to polish it. We're done. Um, so yeah. Yep. What, what all they said. <laughs> mm -hmm. Perfect. In, Thank in you. addition. Uh, oh, Sorry, let's say like in the good. yeah. Um, in in addition, if uh, going back to kind of focusing your 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 demo reel, if you want if you want to make like as a student or whoever is applying, if you want to make multiple demo reels, that's fine too. There's like, hey, here's my art, here's my uh, modeling demo reel, here's my concept art demo reel. Like that be that's perfect too. Mm -hmm. Awesome, perfect. Thank you so much. Now we're gonna start taking questions from people watching. So people watching, leave your questions in the Twitch chat, or if you'd like, join the Discord and leave questions there in Art Sat 10 a.m. channel. I'm gonna start reading off from there. So Chelsea Chung asks, what type of work do you often make for your job that isn't commonly seen in student portfolios or artist social media? The, th the, th the throwaway stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Like the stuff that you literally make in five, 10 minutes that just has to go somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Usually it's like a request from internal or something. And it's like, can you draw this? I don't know, turn around of a wet box on the side of the road. It's like, <laughs> sure. Yeah. Uh, like Simlish is like something really specific to me because I work on those Sims, but like all that signage that you see, someone has to design it. We don't just have like a, uh, a font that we like print out the thing <laughs> with because specifically like uh, languages, made up languages, let's say you're making like a sci-fi game, like someone has to design that signage and like create I don't know, a compendium of what is this alien language? Sign? So like uh, also like rough UI, rough uh, for concept artists, like sometimes you're going to have to do it. Uh, rough VFX, like really rough, not what Ashley does. Like, <laughs> like sometimes we, Just I remember stuff I make. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes like for, for concept artists, they'll be like, uh, we don't really want to give VFX something like as simple as this so can you show us like what this magic might look like like i remember for um the magic pack for the sims 4 i'm sorry i don't know the actual name it's always <laughs> like it that's to us that's like gp08 or whatever so um we had to like do like magic that comes out of wands and it was like a really rough idea um and then eventually they'll maybe send that to vfx to take our <laughs> rough work and make it pretty <laughs> so yeah 
I would say I get a lot of strange internal requests for things that aren't even game related mm. that I've, I've done for my studio that I will probably like I did the designs for our shower curtains at our studio. Like I'm not going to put that <laughs> in my portfolio, but I, it, it's it's there and I've, I've done it. Um, but I, I've also been in the, the frame of like um, because I do also 3D stuff like horrible proxy work for something just to convey an idea um because for for me sometimes i'll i'll block out something in 3d to get like a base for a concept so sometimes i could draw like this beautiful piece of signage but i had these horrible horrible like two three demon looking boxes in maya or something that you i would absolutely see them. yeah you will never <laughs> see that <laughs> Yeah, there have been times where after a, a, a whole, you know, five year game dev, five, six year game dev cycle on a, on a game and I'm putting my demo reel together just, you know, for that. And I'm like, I only made three things I like. like what happened? <laughs> <laughs> That's so true and sad. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will say once you get into a position of, of, leadership and and especially like director level leadership you're doing way less art I, it's it's all yeah. it's all onion skin napkin sketches and and sad redlining over other people's things make this I, bigger uh, oh, yeah. Told, yeah, yeah that too at max's it's like art directors it's more directing less art mm -hmm. <laughs> lots of know. excel sheets lots of excel <laughs> The yeah. napkin thing makes me laugh though, because my old art director literally was like, Did "I all. made this, <laughs> make it." <laughs> yeah, I, I I would say so. Our our studio production director uh, gave me a good piece of advice when I first mentioned I was interested in leadership, and he said, "Okay, well, for every one person that's working under you, you're going to have twenty percent less time to do the thing that you do, like directly working under you." Mm -hmm. Um. And I don't know how that math works out because there's like eight people directly under me now. <laughs> You're on uh, a negative, my dude. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's it's true. I mean, maybe not those exact numbers, but there's there's significant fall off as you manage people. Um, and it's just finding, you know, if that's what makes you happy, great. Uh, I like making people's lives easier. Uh, so do I like that more than drawing? Eh, that's still up for debate, but uh, it's, debatable. It's, it's, it's all right. It's all right. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, that's, that's that's good. That's something I never thought about, Matt. Because uh, I was I'm been I was recently, I guess recently within the year, like promoted to lead at at Gearbox. And one of the things like that I've quickly realized was, wow, I'm doing less of the old thing I did. Now I'm doing a lot of Excel and managing people. And but at the same time, you got to think like, well, is this is this is a good, uh, it's it's good progression because you know how long do you want to just do the same thing over and over again before you can actually just start I guess teaching other people and helping them you know the the younger generation i guess <laughs> mm -hmm. thank you uh we have a question from slnt walrus sorry if i butchered your name uh specifically for sadie it says sadie you're a 2d environment artist for arcane a studio that seems to mostly do 3d games are you responsible for producing concepts for the 3D artists? Um, yes and, and no. <laughs> um, to, I think for me personally, um, this is a very complicated question, so I will try not to uh, take too long. Um, so for me, I started as an associate 3D artist um, where I was doing props and everything like that. Um, but my primary passion is like graphic design, signage, um, environmental graphic design, uh, like I was saying earlier, um, that helps navigate players um, in, a, in a game world space. Um, so I kind of have, and again, this position was, I don't want to sound pretentious and say this position was made for me, but nobody else in the studio has this position. And so it's been a lot of learning over the past year of what my job entails. And I have done concept art for uh, the 3D artists. I have done graphic design. I have done marketing stuff. I have done UI. I've done 3D stuff. I, I kind of just do whatever is, is asked uh, of me. 
Um, but as, as far as actually just like, it, it's not one facet of my job, I should say. Um, I, I wear many hats, as Matt was saying earlier, I wear many hats and I help wherever I can. Um, and as I progress and, and learn in this role, it, it constantly evolves. Um, so I hope that kind of answers the question. I feel like it's a little ambiguous and vague, but um, overall, uh, I still work in 3D. Um, I think that's the misconception is that I'm working like on a 2D game aspect, which is not the case. I just, 2D for us um, at our studio means signage or, um, you know, if you look at previous arcane titles, they'll have like those really great environmental storytelling pieces of notes that have been left behind or books or, or things of that nature. That's kind of where I fall into. Um, so hopefully that explains it. <laughs> we have another is, question from, oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just gonna say like, Sadie, your job is the literal dream. I, I would <laughs> love to just do nothing. Well, not, I mean, obviously you do a lot more than yeah. this, but like just doing like decal work and signage and all of that for in level, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was very much, uh, at first, they were like, no, 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 we don't need that. And then I was like, please. <laughs> like, well, this but what is if what, you did? But what, if we, but what if we did? And it was very much like, I maybe not purposely like didn't do as good on my 3D stuff, but I was like, look at all this fantastic 2D stuff I'm doing. Perhaps if we had a dedicated artist and it, <laughs> uh, it just, Listen, yeah. You got it though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the secret does work. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> You should put yourself in there. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, we got a question from Brianna Bernard. So sorry if I'm butchering you guys' names. Uh, they ask, for any slash all panelists, what, if any, was your I'm a game artist moment? Specifically, the moment that made you really feel like you've made it in the industry. This panel? <laughs> I, I haven't had one. <laughs> Aww. Sorry. Aww. That's very, uh, that's very good. I, yeah. I don't know that I've ever had one. Um, Your first game credit. Come on, Matt. Sure. That's yeah. always like the big <laughs> there one. There it is. There it uh, is, mom. I did it. <laughs> no, I guess. Screenshotting it and sending yeah, it. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would say like the first time that I had like a whoa moment um, was the first time I saw one of my concepts get made into a 3D model and then make mm -hmm. it into the game. That was a pretty surreal experience because mm -hmm. um, I had never had that experience. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm an oil painter originally. Like that's not, <laughs> you don't normally, they don't normally get up and start walking around. Um, but so I, I guess that would be the closest to that moment. But at no point have I felt comfortable uh, in, in the industry or, or as, you know, as an artist, as an art director. Um, I'm sure I'm not alone in that. Uh, I think, I think uh, you know, uh, anxiety and and uh, and self doubt uh, often walk hand in hand with creative processes, and I, it's never went away. Um, I'm having fun, and that's good. But at any point, someone's going to find out that I'm having fun, and the fun's going to have to stop. Uh, but yeah, I it's kind of a weird thing. Taking what Matt said, it's kind of like a that imposter syndrome that follows. I tend to screenshot every time, like. I make it somehow like a game credit and I put it in a folder on my computer called you made it or something like that. Um, and I seriously do. But um, I think like the biggest thing for me is like when I was just starting out as a contract artist, just freshly graduated, like uh, Matt said, seeing my 2D art translated to a 3D was like, I'd never seen that. And it was like the coolest thing in the world. Um, that was like number one. Number two was like seeing my art in a game. And even if it's being like picked apart, it's like, I made it though. <laughs> I guess for, for me, it was when I was at GDC a couple years ago and someone that I had learned when I first started, someone who I was watching their tutorials on YouTube and doing everything and basically like someone else like oh my god this person is so great 
I saw them at GDC and I was went to introduce myself and he said, Oh yeah, I know you. I've heard I've I've heard of you. And I was like, What? Really? Damn. Best feeling. What? <laughs> <laughs> like, no way. <laughs> yeah, I think the other thing is like I I've had a lot of moments where I I, I think I make it and I, I'm doing great and then it, it slowly fades and mm -hmm. I think for me personally, like I never wanna get complicit in that feeling because I feel like if I if I settle for any of those moments then I'll never improve and I'll never like achieve the next next thing because like my overall goal for one day in the industry is to be an art director or something and it's like if I was just satisfied with what I was doing now I would never be able to to reach that goal but I think it's incredibly I love your idea of like having that folder that you can go to and seeing your accomplishments because sometimes you do Feel, it does fade yeah yeah it does it, it and, fades and you you get overwhelmed and then just going back to seeing those things and it, it gives you a little bit of hope and you know like what to work towards next so it's important to stay humble but also like have that confidence yeah where, ex where you are like I did you did make it especially if you struggled like all of us have with uh rejections it's always important to be like you know, look back on your acceptance when you do get a job. Like I look back on, it, I'm like, there it is. That's the thing that got me in. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> like celebrate your success, yeah, but always, celebrate. always yeah. just like look forward to, to whatever you can do and take breaks and take care of yourself, yeah. obviously. And that don't, do not push yourself, but like, it's okay to celebrate, be like awesome and excited, but it, you know, like just continue to improve. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you ever get to the point where you feel like you're getting overconfident and you're feeling too good about yourself, just read any comment section and always bring yourself down. To <laughs> always normalize yourself. <laughs> Go humble you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, to finish this off, I believe uh, we have one that, well, we have a much more questions, but you know, send them in the Discord. Uh, join the Discord if you'd like. SGDA Summit. Uh, we have a question from Captain Diz. Can you share any inspirations or role models you had when practicing your art? Oh boy, someone else, please. <laughs> <laughs> I have too many, and I'm gonna I'm gonna butcher the name. So, um, I think for 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 me personally, I gravitate to a lot of traditional painters for inspiration as far as like my art style. Um, I I like Pollock a lot. I like the chaos that kind of invokes or like he, he creates with that. Um, I won't get super nerdy into it because there's there's a lot, but I also think like inspiration wise, as far as like my career and like what I how I want to be and like empathy and kindness, like my my lead uh, at Arcane, uh, his name's Fi Wen. Uh, he gave me my shot <laughs> on the team and he was he's someone I very much um, take a lot of inspiration from as far as like how I want to be able to lead and act and overall just be as a person like his kindness knows no bounds. <laughs> um, so I think, I think, yeah, it's like tandem as far as like my work, traditional painters, all, you know, all of them, everything consume media as much as possible. And then as far as like how I want to be as a person. So Uh, I, I will, I will just stick to art because that's easier <laughs> and you will probably have a better chance of recognizing the names than if I talk about, uh, old friends and, and my grandfather and stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I'm a, I'm a big fan of, uh, Sergio Telfi, who was a Italian, um, comics artist. His work is absolutely stunning. I highly recommend you look at it. If you have played Pillars of Eternity 2, there's these little watercolor pieces that I did that are all heavily influenced by, by his, uh, his color work. Um, it's interesting because so many of the people that I really used to look up to have like gotten into NFTs and stuff. And I'm just like, oh, oh I know. <laughs> oh. Worst thing, isn't it? Uh. I, I'm like looking over to my art shelf and I was like, no, nah, that person sucks. That person sucks. Uh, um, 
but uh, it, I, I also look to a lot of Golden Age illustrators. Um, mm. You know, uh, Mark English is or was uh, an incredible illustrator and an absolutely incredible person. Um, I'm a big fan of you know Lion Decker, like any mm. anyone who's painted probably is. Um, anyone that does really rich things with light and shape. Um, if if someone can do some really juicy shape welding and I can still recognize like, ah, yes, that's that's a thing. And it's over there and it's one value. It's like, mm, uh, uh. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, I, it's all over the board. I, th I think it's important to have really, really diverse um, influences, especially if you're going to be doing something like this where like we were talking about, you kind of have to chameleon from time to time. Um, being able to crack open your brain and go, oh yeah, th this person would be really great for this thing. Um, you know, I, I didn't think I'd ever be able to squeeze Topi's work into into you know a video game, but I got the chance, and so I did. Um, but yeah, it's I think the broader, just generally speaking, the the broader your influences and experiences are, the better you're going to be able to do literally anything, but especially art. So. Yeah, gonna... I'll, I'll oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say uh, for me. <laughs> sorry. Um, uh, so 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 for me, and uh, I apologize because I'm gonna name drop, but uh, mm -hmm. Michelle Gagne is uh, who's someone that uh, I I was able to work with and who I can I'm happy that I can actually call a friend now, and uh, he was someone I got to work with uh, a while back on Battleborn and just seeing how he was able to just seeing his art style and how, and how he animated things really in, not necessarily inspired but influenced a lot of the work and the techniques that I use you know presently so that was something that was you know like six five six years ago and his just the way that um, seeing his work you know still influences what I do uh, today and he's a 2D artist Awesome. Thank you. Those are wonderful inspirations. <clears throat> well, now that we're closing this off, uh, real quick, if you have a quick two cents, quick 30 seconds uh, to give advice to our lovely chat, the lovely people watching, just a quick, like, inspiring words. Um, I have one. Uh, don't be discouraged by rejection. And um, as you go into this industry, like, uh, real talk here, you're going to get a crap ton of rejection letters and I know just starting off it was like the most dejecting thing is putting together the you know most awesome portfolio and then just either a being ghosted or b straight up rejection letters um I have over 200 of them and I look back at them sometimes and you know um at the time it was super hard and the thing is, like, if you have that spark of creativity, if you have that passion to do this in your heart, you'll push through it and eventually you will eventually get in, you know. Um, also, I say know your worth as an artist. Um, I'm really hesitant and I would never say uh, do spec work. Uh, art tests are kind of a necessity, but um, spec work, like, don't just know your worth. Um don't charge five dollars for a full rendered illustration that's ridiculous and not only are you affecting other artists like you're affecting yourself and you should always know what you're worth there you know as a as a concept artist you're not just charging for the work you do you're charging for the knowledge that you put into it to learning your craft so um be confident and be your be your own number one supporter right like you have to be an advocate for yourself Right. And be someone that other people want to work with, mm -hmm. have a good attitude. And uh, because depending, I don't care how talented you are. If you're not, if you're going to be a pain in the butt to work with, um, I don't want you on my team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> just the general of be kind, you know, have empathy. Um, biggest one for me is be passionate, but don't be blinded by it. Um, you know, um, there are some people in this industry that sometimes may take advantage of people who, especially younger individuals coming in who are extremely passionate and um, 
that can be detri detrimental to your mental health, your physical health. Um, for me personally, you know, I busted my butt, you know, years before I even got into a job. And by the time I got into it, I started having, you know, issues with my hands. And it turns out I have arthritis at the level of like a 65 year old woman, but you know, like take care of yourself, you know, be kind, be passionate, don't be blinded by it. So. Yeah, to tie to tie into actually some of what all everyone was saying there. Um, knowing knowing your worth is important. Being passionate is important. But if you see passionate as a requirement on a job description, ask a lot of questions in that interview. Um, <laughs> be careful. Purple yeah, be very. Squirrels, very unicorns. Just be careful. <laughs> if it says fast paced work environment, just go get out of there. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it. I genuinely ask questions during the interview. Interviews go with both ways. You're interviewing the place that you're hoping to work at just as much as they're interviewing to find out if they want to work with you. Um, the other thing I would say is be passionate outside of your craft too. Um, sometimes work isn't there. Work dries up and you need to find a joy in other places. And if you tie your identity so tightly to the thing that you do for a living, if that shifts, that's going to suck a lot. Um, you know, when I was out of college, I worked probably 12 different jobs before I got a job in this industry, doing all kinds of weird crap. Um, I, you there's know, no I, shame in it. There's no there's, shame in it. No, no, absolutely not. I, I worked in a factory. I did signage manufacturing. I did a stint as an interior designer, which I wasn't qualified for, but, you know, <laughs> eh. um, no, actually, that was a blast. It was my boss <laughs> was awful, but the work was fun. Um <laughs> But none of that was like, if I had viewed those as failures because they weren't the thing that I wanted to be, um, I would have I would have been digging myself into a giant, giant hole. And so, you know, find things that bring you joy outside of work and don't let go of those things. Uh, I love playing tabletop games. I play them yeah. all the Yes, time. find hobbies outside. Find hobbies. <laughs> oh, yep. whatever you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Yep. If you, oh. like, if you like going outside, go outside lots. Go for hikes, you know. Watch birds. Yeah. Birds are great. <laughs> There's so many cool birds. I'm not even a bird watcher and I love them. Uh, so yeah, just find other things to be passionate about and hold on to those things and, and um, you know, really cultivate them too, because you can find things that inspire the work that you do from all kinds of weird places. You know, I get good ideas from things from washing the dishes. So uh, yeah. Seriously, take care of your health. Um, your health is paramount please take care of your bodies um back problems uh, are uh, rampant <laughs> in their industry uh high blood pressure stress um a lot uh, you know we we suffer a lot or or there have been a lot of people who have gotten very sick or you know um in and i can't remember the name but recently there was someone who passed on from like complications and stuff like that um just please take care of your bodies. Um, back in college, there was like a whole competition of who didn't sleep the most. Please get eight hours of sleep. Don't do it's that. So silly. Um, don't compete trying to see who can get less sleep. It, you're going to hurt yourself. Um, and stretch. Stretch, please. Stretch. For the love uh, of God, stretch. Yeah. And take care of your wrists, please, because if you get carpal tunnel, yeah. That one. Feels how great. are you gonna how are you gonna work if you have carpal tunnel just take I had to yourself. get a very special mouse to be the I don't know what the actual but it looks like a little spaceship that I'm piloting yeah I love because those yeah because <laughs> my is, wrists are so fine. bad yeah yeah <laughs> invest in a good chair yeah <laughs> definitely get a good chair awesome. yeah <laughs> with some back lumbar support <laughs> yeah some pillows yeah <laughs> Well, awesome. Thank you all so much for joining us on this panel. And thank you for everyone for watching. Uh, stay tuned for the next showcase and give it up for our panelists here. Thank you so much again. Thank you. Uh, Thanks, everybody. Know, Thanks for having thank us. You. Thanks for having us. <laughs> of course. And thank you so much. Have a great day, everyone. Bye. Bye, y'all.